have to admit that I feel much older when I look at social media and everything surrounding it. When I was growing up, we didn't have social media and all the images that can be make, make it seem so easy for our teens to stumble and go down a rabbit hole filled with graphic images. When I was young, the only way we saw these things was the blacked out magazines that were behind the shelves of the liquor store. Today, our teens are seeing pornography at an alarming rate. A study was done recently that showed that 75% of teens have seen pornography of some type on social media or on the internet by the time they're 17 years old and with the average age of first exposure being 12 years old. Students are grappling with the role of technology on their mental health and well-being and the easiness in which they can view these images doesn't help. Here are some tips to help your student when it comes to pornography and their desire to watch it. First, teach your student how to manage stress. People turn to destructive outlets such as pornography to handle their stress and students are no different. Without guidance, students don't have the skills to manage the onslaught of stress they encounter. For students, stress can quickly cause distraction, desperation, and exhaustion. For your students, try these exercises even if they roll their eyes at you. One, list and prioritize the things that renew them, maybe biking or reading or music. Two, list relationships that are important to them. Three, help them learn when to say no and when to say yes to demands on their life. One thing is certain, life will be stressful and a student who learns how to manage stress in healthy ways actually grows from the experience. What a gift you can offer your students. Next, place limits on technology. Technology is here to stay. Who knows how it's going to grow and expand from here, but it will. Filters, limits, and boundaries are crucial for it to go well with technology and your student. Research consistently reinforces that the fact that technology can be addictive and can have an ongoing influence will message into people's perspectives. Remember that our brain loves to go for the low-hanging fruit and technology certainly represents a very tempting low-hanging fruit that helps our brains go into autopilot. Some things to consider. Technology opens the door wide, wide world and some students can manage that freedom, others can't. Also, there's no rush, they grow up fast enough. Also, make decisions based on what's best for your student, not what the neighbors are doing. Teach them trustworthiness and accountability are go good things. Teach them how to use the de their devices wisely, including putting them away with a lock and key in a filing cabinet, for instance, to make sure it's difficult to access them when there's temptations. Next, teach the difference between wants and needs. Work with your student to identify and discern the difference between needs and wants. Needs are actually the basics of survival, air, food, water, shelter, clothing, and relationship with God and people. Everything else belongs on the wants list, including sexual gratification. Notice how the things you want shift through the day and depending on your feelings. For instance, if I'm hungry, I want food and it monopolizes my thoughts until I eat. When I'm not hungry, I don't really care about food and think about it and I can focus on other important things. Pornography causes a sexual hunger that creates feelings of anxiety until quenched. It monopolizes a person's thoughts so they can think of things that once were important to them. Things like relationships, hobbies, and extracurricular activities. The trouble is pornography will never satisfy. Next, talk about sex and oxytocin with your student. What is sexual help and why would a student want it? Researcher J. Dennis Fortenberg identifies four areas of sexuality you can use to guide conversations with your students. One is sexual desire, pornography consumes it. Sexual arousal, pornography distorts it. Sexual behavior, pornography controls it. And sexual functioning, pornography creates dysfunction. God designed sex to be the glue in a committed and steadfast loving relationship. He designed a progression that goes from friendship to exclusivity to commitment and finally to covenant. To seal the deal, he created a bonding chemical oxytocin that's released during sexual experiences. Sex truly renews the steadfastness in a relationship biochemically. Pornography distorts the power of the oxytocin glue because the brain literally thinks 
is there and provides the experience necessary to feel what should be felt in the moment. Most students have no idea how much pornography messes with their natural sexual functions and satisfaction in relationships. Next, help your student cultivate wise risk-taking and decision-making. Students are naturally more prone to risk-taking and impulsive decision-making. It's how they're wired. Now, this doesn't mean it's good or bad. It just means that students need guidance on how to wisely manage this season of life. Look at David. He took a risk as a teen, stepping into the ring with Goliath. In that moment, as a teen, he challenged his risk-taking. Risk-taking can take us many different places, some dangerous, some exciting, and some new. Regardless, it takes us somewhere, but we get to decide what risks we pursue. During the teen years, risk-taking is a very important part of development, but remember that normal does not make it good. When students are aroused, lonely, angry, bored, or upset, decision-making can take a wrong turn fast and risk-taking can become damaging. Teach your students to pause, stop, and think as they begin to feel emotions run rampant. Help them formulate an emergency exit plan when their defenses are down. In regard to poor sexual choices, ask them to contemplate how God and a future spouse fits into these choices. While it is at a risk, is it a risk worth pursuing? Also, encourage close and authentic relationships with God, you, and others. Students with a strong faith and a solid relationship with their parents or an adult leader are less likely to pursue pornography. Making time to spend time with others, whether it be hanging out with friends, being involved in a sport, or taking part as a group such as a church or community group that revolves around their interests, are less likely to pursue pornography. Encourage your student to spend time with others and less time alone in their rooms or on social media. It's okay to check in with them and see how they're doing in this area. Also, as you apply these strategies, know that it won't go perfectly. Remember, if necessary, seek out a well-trained counselor to help your student work through the issues that come with the effects of pornography. Lastly, don't forget to be praying for your student. Your prayer could sound something like this. Lord, thank you for my student, and may they always know how much they are loved. We ask that you bind Satan from the stronghold that pornography has over their life right now and fill the empty voids with you and you alone. When they feel tempted to seek it out, may your Holy Spirit fill them up in such a way that only by your grace are they able to move forward and see change. May they desire to spend time with people and less time alone to feed this need, and may you provide people in their lives to help them with this. In your glorious and holy name, amen.